Welcome to Uncut Angling, I'm Aaron Weeb. I'm not sure when you're gonna be watching this, but today this is being filmed on April 30th, which marks the very last day of the fishing season in Northern Manitoba. Unless you go extremely far north where the fishing season never closes, I'm at Wakusko Lake, staying at Wakusko Falls Lodge, which is a great jump point to fish all these big lakes and rivers around here with trophy pike, walleye, lake trout, etc. And today is about etc because I have stumbled onto a crazy whitefish bite here that was not my intent to fish for or film today. But I have not been able to catch a trophy sauger yet, which is what I was looking for, as Wakusko Lake is the number one place anywhere nearby to catch a master angler trophy size sauger. So I'm gonna get started and hammer some whitefish instead. So this right here is a Strike Master lithium 40 volt auger, which just came out this year. It's a new model. I've always been a massive skeptic about battery powered augers and their role in ice fishing, especially here in Northern Manitoba. But since I got this auger in January, I have not used a gas auger once, even in ice this thick, with a 10 inch bit and crazy cold temperatures, it has performed absolutely flawlessly. The one thing you have to do is keep the battery warm if you get into that minus 15, minus 20 degrees Celsius or colder. That's not too big of a deal. You just keep it in your jacket or in your ice shack or in your truck when you're not using it. And I have not drilled enough holes in a day to use up both batteries once. It has been a great auger. And as you can see, it is just so smooth. Press of a button, no warm up, no nothing. So really the only reason I can see to still be uh, hesitant about switching over to a battery powered auger after using this one extensively would be if you're camping or sleeping somewhere where you don't have access to electricity to charge your batteries, then that's gonna be annoying. Also, if you did have extreme slush conditions, I think that this auger would have trouble getting through that, but pretty much all augers hate extreme slush conditions where the holes filling up and stuff. But it's been a great auger, that's for sure. I only drilled one hole here because I have already been hammering these fish like five feet over. So things are kind of staged, you could say. Okay, see fish cruising along the bottom here. That's a fish before I've even dropped down. This is gonna be cool. Okay, I'm dropping down an Acme Castmaster Rattlemaster, which is an awesome jigging spoon for all stuff. I mean, these are aggressive fish, but this jigging spoon that's got that rattle in it, and it's a dense bait, it gets down there fast. It's a good searching bait. It's good for aggressive fish. It's good for tapping on the spot for neutral fish. Look at this, I just got down here and this fish is cruising straight in on me. Got him, instantly. Like I said, this is absolutely gonna be nutty fishing. Here we go, whitefish number one on camera. Look at that, how exciting. They are delicious, they are plentiful. It's a great food fish option. The other thing is, is that whitefish are pretty delicate. So if you're planning to release them, keep your hands out of the gill if you can. Their gills are very delicate. Look at this, another one's coming up immediately. Oh, missed him. Look at them just circling down there. Here comes a couple. I do have the Aquaview in, but I'm getting play from these fish before I can even get down to the bottom to see them. Here we go. How awesome is this? Whitefish number two. So cool. Another activation technique for fish in general is to pound in the bottom. Here comes one. I'm pounding on the bottom and one's coming sliding in. He'll show up on that camera any moment. There he is. Look at, he wants to eat it right out of the, the dirt there. Oh, he loves it hitting in the mud. He's trying to track it. He'll lift it up so he has an easy eat. It's above you, buddy. Turns around and there's that easy eat. What's happening, whitefish? Look at that. I think they want to chase it more. Look at this. Once I lift it up, look at this. He wants to eat it this high in the water column. How cool is this going to be? How cool is this going to be? So high up. You'll notice how folded my rod is. And that is so important. That flex is what keeps these hooks pinned especially for a fish like a whitefish with a soft mouth. And look at how easy these hooks are coming out because they're barbless. They would throw that hook so easy if you had too stiff of a rod and you couldn't play that fish nice and gently. So 36 inch hot rod. There's other rods that have that nice slow action to them too, but these ones are designed for bait fishing. So they have really slow tapers to them. Great for keeping fish pinned. Look at this, the bottom's crawling now. There must be three or four down there right now. See them circling around in the aqua view. I hope I can get an eat down there. A lot of them want that spoon raised and to be way up. Oh, missed it. Come on. 
look at how bad they are getting it. They cannot track that bait. They're trying so hard to eat it. I guess I'm kind of missing the fish too. You can see just how readily these fish are to eat, which is a mystery to me because so often white fish are almost impossible to catch. I've been on a mission to catch white fish this winter. I spent a bunch of time on Lake Winnipeg and imagine this, Lake Winnipeg known for its walleye fishing probably has more big white fish than it has walleye, but I can't catch one. The commercial nets are just filled with jumbos, but I have not been able to catch one yet. And then I was up at Cedar Lake at Moak Lodge, which I believe has the biggest white fish anywhere. Like they are absolute sumo tanker humpbacks there. And once again, I couldn't catch any. They catch them there by laying a minnow on the bottom and they do get one or two occasionally, but it's not like it's action fishing. Hey, hey, there's some bigger ones in there, I think. I can't get them to eat. So watch this, if I lift it up in the water column, it's probably gonna get them chasing. Look at that one come way in from the side. Look at this commitment. Once he starts moving up, he's way more likely to eat it. Got him. Rad. Those bottom ones are way more sluggish. And that is just, I believe, the case with whitefish is so often, especially the big baits that we present for them, because they're eating little bugs for the most part. They're not eating minnows. I hear some people's theories that whitefish are extremely curious fish and very likely to eat a lure but they're only very likely to eat a lure when they are on more of a bait fish pattern. Like these whitefish, for example, the ones coming up to chase it in the water column, I'm assuming are eating the odd minnow. Whereas in a lot of lakes, I think whitefish just scour for bugs and insects and little stuff like that. When we were lake trout fishing on Athapap at Baker's Narrows earlier this winter, we had the Aquaview down looking at our dead bait while we were lake trout fishing and whitefish would come by and they'd be angled at 45 degrees, literally dragging their noses along the bottom. And we tried jigs and stuff and jigging spoons and whatnot. They would just cruise along, probably looking for bugs and showing absolutely no interest. Another thing you'll see in Brian Bogdan, the owner at Wacusco Falls Lodge, he put me onto this observation. He has a fish come in and he says, oh, a whitefish just came through. So I said, well, how do you know it was a whitefish? And he says, well, what they'll do is they'll come in and more often than look at your jig or your spoon or whatever you're using, is they'll go above it and they'll stare at your knot or your swivel or whatever you have, because that's a lot closer to representing like a little insect or a little bug or whatever. That's why in a lot of lakes, like in Alberta and stuff, they use little wire worms and flies through the ice. Oh, 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 wow, it's amazing how they miss it. Like they do not really want to eat it. And that's the importance, how did I miss that? That's the importance of using such a light bait so that it actually goes into their mouth when they breathe on it like that because they're used to eating stuff that's the size of a mosquito. Ooh, that's a hungry one. How did I miss that? He'll eat it again, he's so aggressive. See how many times he's trying to eat it until you just get him? So for location, looking for whitefish, I know that after everything I've told you about struggling to catch them this winter, I'm really not one to talk, but what seems to be a likely place for whitefish to hang out is right where the rock of a reef or an island or a shoreline meets the basin. Because if you think about basically any lake, it is a collection point of silt from thousands of years of erosion and whatnot. You'll have the odd reef and stuff, but mostly soft. So where you get the meeting point where it changes from mud to rock is a great fishing point for all species that transition, but especially whitefish that really seems to be an intersection point, like high travel area. Wow, they're getting aggressive. Where you can count on coming across whitefish because they're out there in that soft bottom and then they come flirt along that rock edge. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Here comes one scurrying along the bottom. Oh, one coming from both sides. Oh, a third one. We'll get him to chase, I guess. Look at this. How cool is that? How high was that in the water column when he ate it? So cooperative. Oh, that's a sucker. That's where the camera's just so key because otherwise you see that big red mark slash by and you're thinking it could be a walleye if you're fishing for walleye. And meanwhile, there could be schools of suckers going by. It is just crazy 
all of them are taking runs at it now. So when you get a whitefish this size, you might think it's a Cisco because it looks very much like a Cisco. The only difference, a whitefish mouth is pointed down, which really suits a whitefish for feeding off the bottom. And a tulipy or a Cisco or a lake herring, whatever you want to call it, actually has a mouth that's pointed up. I'll just show you, this is the exact lure that I have tied on. Rattlemaster, 112 ounce, like a UV glow color. It's mostly white. I've got no bait on this jigging spoon, but oftentimes, you know, you'll put a, a fish eyeball on there or you'll put any piece of a minnow really on it. Oh, missed him. I think he's going to eat it again. These fish are so aggressive right now. Got him. So I've got 17 white fish here and I got another six over here that I caught before I started filming, which seems crazy excessive. It is kind of, but the limit's 25. So it's totally legal. The only thing is you got to make sure that you have a way to manage all this fish. And what I'm doing with it is my buddy Ken is going to be smoking it, pressure cooking it. I'm not sure. This fish will be preserved in cans and can be eaten over a, a long period of time then. Okay, the final fish for our limit. We're going to actually film a video with Ken on how to prepare these whitefish because I'm sure there is a lot of people wondering what the best way to cook one of these whitefish is. There's 25 for a limit. Totally unexpected. Just one more awesome angling opportunity to explore here at Wakusco Falls Lodge in northern Manitoba. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. So step one to this process is catching the whitefish, which I have taken care Probably of. Probably the most important. Well, you don't get to step two ever unless you do step <laughs> exactly. one. Exactly. Step two is...